Chapter 9 Evening The deadly donut triggers an unwelcome visit, and I have to watch something disgusting. I spent the afternoon in my bedroom. My eyelids were swollen and sore, so I couldn't play on the computer, or watch TV, or read. I just had to lay there, with a massive moon head, doing nothing. I must have drifted off to sleep for a few hours, because when I looked at my alarm clock, it was suddenly half past four. Nearly tea time. I called down to my mum to ask for a drink, but she didn't reply, so I put on my dressing gown and went downstairs. It was now more than six hours since I'd tried to eat that surprisingly dangerous jam donut. Half of it was in the bin at the aquarium, the other half was in Jane's stomach. I was pretty sure that nothing else bad could come from it. I was wrong. The deadly donut had set wheels in motion. Wheels of donut fuel disaster and destruction. I paused at the door to the front room. There was laughter coming from inside. Dad wouldn't be home yet. Maybe Mum was on the phone to Auntie Kath. I shrugged, opened the door, and instantly wished I hadn't. If my eyes hadn't been two tiny slits, I reckon they would have popped out of my head. Hello, sleepy, said Mum. Glad you've finally woken up for your visitor. Hi, Roman, said Jane, who was sitting on the sofa right next to my mum. <laughs> nice PJs. As quick as I could, I pulled my dressing gown closed. I was wearing my Postman Pat pyjamas, which are about five years old, maybe more. They finish halfway up my arms and legs and belly, and they're stained here and there with splodges of old crusty breakfast. They're totally comfortable, but probably not what you'd choose to wear in front of your girlfriend. Oh, what are you doing here? I asked. At least my voice had returned back to normal, even though my head felt like an overinflated space hopper. Oh, that's not very polite, Roman, said Mum, standing up. Jane came round just to see if you're okay. I tried to wake you, but you were sleeping like a dead sloth. I guess Mum was a bit right. It wasn't very polite of me. But still, Jane had let me get into trouble, and ignored me on the bus. I also came round to say sorry, said Jane. I panicked a bit when Mrs MacDonald asked about the donut. I had never been in trouble before, and when you got on the bus, I didn't want you to see me with all that stuff in my hair. I've washed it out now, though. She smiled at me. She was wearing a dolphin t-shirt. I guessed she'd bought it from the gift shop at the aquarium while I was with the para uh, paramedic. I felt bad. Her other top must have been soaked. And she was my girlfriend, after all. Well, um, I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have ducked. We're quits then, she said, making her nose go all wrinkly like a walnut whip. How's your face? Uh, it's a bit better, I said. It only hurts when I breathe. Jane chuckled. Your mum's just been showing me pictures of you when you were a baby. Oh, come on, I thought. Not in front of my girlfriend. I should probably explain a few things about mum here. She's pretty much the most embarrassing person of all time. I'm an only child, so she takes photos of everything I do. Literally. You name it, there's a photo of me doing it. Brushing my teeth, photo. Eating soup, photo. Putting on my socks, photo. Combing my hair. Photo. Then, she shows them to anybody who's in the house for more than about three seconds. Jane pointed to the photo album that was open on the sofa. I particularly like this one of you in the bath. I dived forwards and flicked the album shut. That's enough of that. Oh, he's so grouchy when he wakes up, said Mum. Humpty Grumpty, we like to call him. <laughs> I took a deep breath. Rosie Taylor said you might need to have your head amputated, Jane told me. Huh? I said. <sighs> Typical. Oh, why would she say such a nasty thing about you and your lovely little noggin, said Mum, ruffling my hair. I ducked out of the way. She doesn't like me much, Mum. Oh, well, that's strange. When you two were at nursery, Rosie was your best friend, Mum said, surprising, uh, sounding surprised. In fact, me and her mum used to joke that you two would get married. Oh, please stop, I said. Of all the embarrassing things mum had ever said, this was surely the worst. Mum didn't seem to hear me, though. 
Here, look at this one. She flipped through the photo album, stopping at a picture of me and Rosie, aged about three. We were, oh, hugging each other. Hugging Rosie Taylor, I tell you. Yuck. I'd rather hug a camel with chicken pox. Hmm, I said. Maybe we could burn that one. Oh, I think it's sweet, said Jane. Then, well, there was this incident that happened. Rosie and her mum cut us off after that. And mum's voice trailed away. She's been awful to me every single day since, I said, finishing the sentence for her. I'd no idea what the incident was, but it was probably absolutely nothing. Rosie has never needed much of an excuse to be horrible to me. Anyway, said Mum to Jane, lovely to finally see Roman have a friend over. Can't I get you anything from the kitchen? I'll have a donut, I began, but Mum interrupted me. Oh, sorry, Dumpling, I was just talking to Jane. You're not allowed food, remember? My stomach rumbled. I'd hoped that she wouldn't find out about the rule, but Mrs MacDonald had told her at the aquarium. Well, said Jane, licking her lips, um, since Roma mentioned it, I wouldn't mind having a donut, please. I gulped.